on this week in history. Sponsored by the Great British Expos. Home of the UK's largest regional business expos. Find out more at greatbritishexpos.co.uk. And this is the first episode part of On This Week in History this week on Samhain, All Hallows' Eve. I'd just like to say big shout out, love to my grandfather, Cyril James Scott, one of the greatest people in creation, um, who was born on November the 1st. Back in wherever you are doing, uh, I went to visit Gran and Grandad in Cannington Cemetery Ah. uh, two weeks ago. So um, I felt the spirit was with them. Hmm. So I felt... Very much that when Grandad died, he moved into me. I went from being someone who didn't talk to people a lot mm. on the street to suddenly becoming like, like Grandad. So, um, talking about Scots, um, who do you think you are this week? Alex Scott was was on there, of course. I particularly like Alex Scott because of her surname, obviously being yeah. the same as mine on Maybe. the maternal side. A mm. uh, very interesting woman. So, um, effectively, her maternal line was Jewish from Lithuania, and obviously her her parents' side come from Jamaica. Mm. But it turned out that her four times great grandfather owned twenty seven slaves himself, oh, oh, dear wow. uh, which, which obviously um, quite upset her actually. Hit, to be interesting, enough, yeah. so um, yeah, she got a lot of lot of stick for um, her sort of London accent, shall we say? But right. um, I, I, I'm a big fan of Alex Scott's teeth, amongst other things. <laughs> um, anyway, so starting <laughs> starting with the first fact and all this week in history today. Uh, in 1390. So it's interesting that on this particular week in history, nothing happened for millions of years, yeah. billions of years. Uh, it's so, strange when that happens. You know, wouldn't it be good if we could actually say in 43.6 billion BC, mm-hmm. uh, Andromeda exploded and created a black hole in Sirius Major or something, mm-hmm. you know, instead of having to start at 1390. I mean, something must have happened in, in the years before, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, a bit more, more research needed, I reckon, for that. Anyway, so um, I'm, I'm interested in this sort of thing. So uh, 1390, the first trial for witchcraft took place in Paris. Oh, um, so no, we talked about witchcraft a lot yeah. recently in yeah. some of the trials, so... Um, something that I've always been fascinated in, so being a bit of a weird little boy, I had loads of books on this. So one of my heroes, actually, I don't who as I'm now older, I no longer consider to be a hero, was Richard Neville, the Earl of Warwick, otherwise known as Warwick the Kingmaker. Um, he basically jumped sides between the Yorkists and the Lancastrians in the War of the Roses. Right. Um, most of the time he, he, he supported the York, Yorkists and then he... He, he switched sides. So in 1470, Henry VI was restored to the throne after Warwick defeated the Yorkists in battle. Right. So, um, so basically there was a seesaw between Henry VI and Richard II, I think it was, all through about 1445 to 1485. And of course, we had then had the definitive battle at Bosworth. Who knows anything about that? The Battle of Bosworth. What happened at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485? Who got oh. killed? My horse, my horse, my oh, kingdom for a horse. King, uh, Kim James. King Richard the Third. Richard the Third. Uh, so Richard the Third was the Yorkist, and he was defeated by Henry Tudor, who became mm. Henry the Seventh, and that was the very last battle of the War of the Roses. Right. And then, of course, we had the Tudor dynasty continuing. Tudors had a flimsy claim to the throne, really, but mm. technically they were Lancastrians, I guess. So talking about that, 1485, Henry the Seventh was crowned king on this week. Mm. So quite interesting that 15 years before Henry the Sixth, who of course was no relation to Henry the Seventh, by the way, mm. no relation whatsoever. Uh, 1529, um, a wonderful man in many respects, uh, Thomas More, was appointed Lord Chancellor to Henry the Eighth. A uh, wonderful film starring Paul Schofield, I would urge you to watch, called The Man for All Seasons, uh, starring um, uh, Philip Schofield, Paul Schofield, sorry. He was a great Shakespearean actor, played Thomas More. Thomas More was effectively Lord Chancellor to Henry VIII. He was a Catholic, a man of great principle, and uh, basically he refused to go along with Henry um, annulling the marriage to Catherine of Aragon, opposed the dissolution of the monasteries and all that sort of thing. Um, and um, r- right up to the last, Henry tried to get him to sort of recant and be a good boy, and he wouldn't, so he was um, executed mm. uh, and was replaced by Thomas Cromwell, who was a very seedy character. Um, talk about um, injustices, something I hate. So again, one of my heroes, one of my great heroes of all time, um, Walter Raleigh. Anyone mm. know anything about Walter Raleigh people? I've heard of his name, but I'm, yeah. I'm so Walter Raleigh um, basically was a great um, seaman, I suppose, mm. you know, and and um, 
uh, was really famous, Laura. I think, for discovering tobacco. Oh, okay. Right. So he he went to the Americas and came back with tobacco mm. uh, and various other things. Uh, he was uh, a huge favourite of Elizabeth the mm First, -hmm. um, who, of course, was um, succeed succeeded by uh, James the First or James the Sixth of Scotland, who, of course, was the son of Mary Queen of Scots, if you remember. Um, and for whatever reason. Um, James didn't like Walter Raleigh. It's always puzzled me. And, of course, you know, it's a bit late to do anything about it now. Uh, so in 1618, uh, James had Walter beheaded Ooh, after um, spending 17 years on or off in the Tower of London. Cool. He was actually allowed out for a few years to go to what he called El Dorado. You might have heard mm. of that, which is basically it means something like the Island of Gold or something. So Walter basically said to the king that I can go to the Americas and get you loads of wealth. Mm. Um, came back. And he was actually technically um, executed for plotting against the king, right? Which is, um, you know, very, very odd. So, um, yeah, I feel very sad about it because I think he's he's a character. I probably, if you said to me twenty, write down twenty English heroes of of, of all time, he would be in there. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe quite high up as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Sixteen eighty two. I picked this for a particular reason. Um, I, I expect Drew would have seen this. Do you ever go to Wells, Drew? Yes. Wells, the city. Yeah. The There's a blue pack, blue plaque outside a certain restaurant in, mm. quite close to, um, you know, the Bishop Bishop's Palace. Yeah. I know you've um, seen that. There's a blue plaque. Anyway, it's, 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 so I'll, I'll say what the fact is first. In sixteen hundred eighty two, William Penn lands at what is now Chester, Pennsylvania. Mm. Of course, Pennsylvania is named after William Penn. Mm. Did you know that? Mm. And there's a plaque in Wells, and it says William Penn Was preached here. here, spoke here mm -hmm. in 1675 mm. wow. or whatever. Um, so I think William Penn comes from Somerset. I'm not totally sure about that. Mm. Uh, I'd have to say, um, of all the places I've been in America, maybe certainly socially, mm. if I had to go anywhere, I'd go to Philadelphia. Yeah, I was going to say Philadelphia. You've talked about that before. Getting wrecked, Claire would love it. Getting wrecked in Philadelphia is like nowhere else. <laughs> just... I just want to try a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah, I had that. Oh, yeah. yeah, nice. Had a couple of those. Nice. You know, as, you, as, well. as well, uh, I have just searched up, William Penn was born in London. Was he? Yeah. I thought he was doing a Wells then. Mm. Yeah. Obviously liked see. it there. Might be on a world place. tour. Yeah. <laughs> so 1726, we're going to see if any of you have got a brain cell now. Mm. 1726, Gulliver's Travels was published. Who wrote Gulliver's Travels? Oh, he wrote Gulliver's Travels. He was actually Travels. a vicar, as you know that. And he came from Ireland. Oh. Oh, I don't Jonathan know. Swift. Jonathan Swift. A very interesting guy, Jonathan Swift. I watched a programme about him about six months ago. Uh, and he absolutely hated Scottish people. No. No, like, absolutely. And he's, he was well known for writing anti-Scottish things. Mm. Um, so it was, it was really, really very interesting. If you've got ten minutes, mm. go and do Check a bit of reading out. about um, Jonathan Swift. So he was a vicar. Obviously wrote this incredible um, piece of fiction. I don't know if you've read Gulliver's Travels. I've seen the uh, film. <laughs> oh, you're, that's with Thingy that's Black. Yeah, yeah, Jack, Jack Black. Black yeah. Jack Black, yeah. Um, yeah. I probably read it when I was about nine or ten, I think. And really, I just love all that sort of escapism, you know, mm. being on this island with giants and, yeah. and all this sort of thing, yeah. you know. Uh, 1863, something that um, I think people just don't know anything about. Uh, the Maori Wars uh, resumed. Maori. Uh, this is the a war between Britain and the Maoris mm. in New Zealand. New Zealand. Uh, and Britain invades Waikato. Uh, Waikato probably is my favourite New Zealand rugby team. Okay. Waikato and Auckland Blues, I like. Okay. Just, just for the record. Yeah. Um, so Waikato <laughs> province. Um, and, of course, it's very interesting now because the New Zealanders, um, you know, we, 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 um, we played um, Midnight Oil yesterday. Beds are burning. Mm. And, of course, um, New Zealanders um, very much revere their Maori traditions. So, But, of course, it did all start off in a war. So uh, one thing we Brits are very good at is... Um, Warring. I say there's a, a brilliant... If you want to see one of the funniest things of all time, I absolutely love <coughs> Al Murray. And Al Murray oh, does yeah. a brilliant uh, programme yeah. all about... Um, different countries we basically conquered everyone in the world and he basically and he's incredibly Explains clever how. and then he goes on about um about the moon and the fact that the americans had gone to the moon he goes what's the bloody point you mm. know going mm. to the moon he says you know he says there's no people there no yeah. one to conquer and then give it back to uh, <laughs> 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 so what's happened you think we had the biggest empire didn't we or one of them mm. 
The what was it the biggest? The wow. biggest. Anyway, I'm 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 facted out for now. So next we have. Um, oh, I nearly got mm, my things out. Of the bit of dear Prudence. We've got um, dear Prudence and Susie and the Banshees. On this week in history, with outstanding call. <laughs> It's a bit naughty to Claire then, so um, <laughs> did it on purpose, just to get her. Um, so, moving on. Um, in 1864, Nevada was admitted as the 36th state of mm. the United States. Nevada. Yeah. Not what was Nevada. the last state admitted? Texas. No, oh. Hawaii. Yay. Yeah. Do you know what Hawaii was originally called? Mm-hmm. It was discovered by James Cook. Oh, yeah. And he it's called Cookland. it the Sandwich Islands. Sandwich Islands. Wow. And of course, they were originally Britain. That's why Hawaii has a Union Jack in its flag. Mm. Ah, Do you not know that? I did not know that. Mind blown again. Yeah. Is that why they talk English? Hawaii has a Union Jack on its flag. Mm. Mm. I'd oh. love to go to Hawaii. Yes. So I'd, I'd love you to go to Hawaii as well. <laughs> Cheers. Um, that's right. <laughs> uh, 1867. Uh, again, so I picked this because it's um, something I studied when I was about 13 for the first time. Uh, Giuseppe Garibaldi. So what else do we know about Garibaldi as a name? Get a bowl, nice biscuit. Biscuits, yay! Yeah. And do you know what sort of biscuit it is, Miss Wiltshire? It's Bold so, biscuit. It's yeah. like a biscuit. It's got little currants in it that it's look like, like a dead ants. Biscuit, isn't it? Yeah, it's thin. Yeah. So nice. my mum and dad used to have Garibaldi biscuits all the time, mm-hmm. and I used to sit in the bed with them. You know, I was like four or five, munching away, a cup of tea and a bit of a Garibaldi on a Sunday morning. Did you dunk it. <laughs> so, uh, oh yeah, absolutely, mm. always. Giuseppe Garibaldi marches on Rome for the second time. So Garibaldi um, was responsible for the unification of Italy. Mm. So if you know that. So basically, up until um, this this time, uh, Italy was um, basically. Um, a load of separate states. So you had um, Venice, um, uh, Milan, Florence, etc., uh, etc. Et so probably seven or eight. Lombardy, mm. Savoy, uh, all different states of Italy. And, and Garibaldi basically um, was the person that created it into one state. And I think the first ever king was Vittor Emmanuel, or Victor oh, Emmanuel, uh, as, as it would be in English. 1881, again, I, I don't know about you people, I love westerns mm-hmm. as in bang bang so again something something i've 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 loved from a very early age it's but my father you know loves westerns he reads in fact for his birthday his 80s 88th birthday i bought him 12 books by a guy called louis lamour who exclusively writes about westerns mm. uh, dad finds it fascinating that um i can actually get these back copies because i'll go on amazon and just go <laughs> yeah just find just them. buy all these louis yeah. Lamour books and he just thinks that you know i'm the best thing i've ever mm. lived you know <laughs> it's amazing you know isn't it about gifts do you know the thing that makes my father the happiest of anything so. i ever do for him if i walk around if i go around on a sunday after the show and I buy him some donuts. He's just so made up. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's really it's good. Look, guys, yeah. he's got there a bag of donuts. He <laughs> says, and he, and he's like happy as a pixie. Uh, is. Yeah. It's the little things, isn't it? You know, mm. Do you know what? Every week they have roast pork. Nearly, it seems. <laughs> what are you having today, Dad? Roast pork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well done, Dad. Uh-huh. Anyway, 1888, Scottish vet John Boyd Dunlop patents the pneumatic bike tire. Mm. A very famous name, Dunlop. Um, I have to say, who watches James Herriot, All Creatures Great and Me! Small? Me! I love it. It's the best programme yeah. on television, in love my opinion. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, on Thursdays. Yeah. Uh, the new version is so much better oh, than the old one. Yeah. It's untrue. Yeah. Um, and, of course, um, Herriot is a Scottish vet practising yeah. in the Yorkshire yeah. Dales. It's just... Um, Everything I like about you yeah, know, the people, lovely, the whole lovely story. people, yeah. the the whole thing about co- being kind to animals. Yeah. And it's just finished, are, isn't it? The it's second just series. Lovely, yeah. lush. Yeah. Mm. 1905, the Union of Sweden and Norway ends. I'm going to show off now. I think that was called the Union of Kalmar, uh, K-A-L-M-A-R. So obviously very interested in Scandinavian history. Mm. Um, so Sweden and Norway were um, effectively uh, ruled by the Swedish king for quite some time. Um, and Norway, I don't think when it happened, I think it was 1912, they they, they had their first king, uh, and they, they basically chose uh, the brother of the king of Denmark, who then changed his name to Harkon, which is a very uh, a famous uh, Norwegian king's name. So he was the guy, you know, I talked about how brave the Norwegians were in the war, mm-hmm. and I told you about the king's decision, where mm-hmm. the king yep. refused refused yeah. to capitulate to the Nazis, and that mm-hmm. was him, oh, Harkon no. the Seventh. Um one of Paul's great men of history, actually. Fantastic chap. 
1914, Britain and France declare war on Turkey, but not on chickens. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like turkey? That's how Christmas was born, Drew. <laughs> Gobbled yeah. them up, apparently, in about three days. <laughs> Not a Ross potato left in sight. What are you looking at me like that for? Turkey. I'm just trying to you know, adjust to your... Boulash. Is there going to be a <laughs> shortage of turkeys this year? Probably. A shortage of everything this year. I heard something year, right? there was going to be a shortage of turkeys well, I think there's Christmas. something about... Um, I, don't, I can't remember exactly what the reason is, but uh, apparently about half the turkeys are quite large, you know. Mm. But, but apparently because of demand or something yeah, that the, these big turkeys are not going to be bought so there's yeah. going to be a lot of waste right. what? Yeah. It's actually one of my fake one of my bike, bike rides um that i go on uh, i cycle past a flock of turkeys mm. they come in the road all the time they're mm. the stupidest mm. things you've ever seen mm -hmm. honestly you've got no um they're not something you look at and you think lovely you know yeah, yeah let's give let's give you a cuddle mr turkey you know? <laughs> um so this this is something um, that you people, especially you scaredy cats at the moment, um, need to think about. In 1918, Spanish flu killed 21,000 people in one week in the USA alone. Whoa. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're having all these talks now about people wanting lockdown back and mm. restrictions and working from home mm. because there's two and the three, 2.3 people in hospital. Uh, for goodness sake, I mean, what is wrong with people? Another mm. one as well, Callum was saying on his podcast uh, the other day, in um, South America, when when Spain invaded South America, um, um, uh, decimated 80% of the population. Well, because they, uh, they, they, they didn't have any immunity. So yeah, I know. They died Crazy. of all basic 80%. little things. 80%? Yeah. Yes, I knew that. Crazy. So, um, 1918. Czechoslovakia gained independence as Austro-Hungary broke up. So Austro-Hungary was obviously one of the great empires um, of Europe. Um, so basically, it was always like Austro-Hungary against Russia uh, and, 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 and maybe us. I'm not sure. I don't think we fought Austro-Hungary very much, to be fair. Um, quite interesting because Czechoslovakia itself is... Uh, I, I find it quite interesting in history because Czechoslovakia itself is two regions which are not, not really homogenised. Right. So uh, Czech is a separate place to Slovakia. And of course now they are two separate countries. Czech Republic and Slovakia are two yeah. separate countries. Yeah, yeah. But at this point in time uh, they actually asked to be joined, to be fair. Mm. Mm. Um, interesting place. And you've been to Brno, haven't you? Brno. You went to Czech, Czech Republic? Mm, you I played went, in Brno, I'm sure you did. I, I played all around Prague, yeah, in Czech Republic. Oh, you went to Brno, because I know Callum did. I'm sure you were in that thing. Yeah, yeah. I probably Isn't that the did. one where you got drunk, drunk and then yeah. he got left behind? Oh, it's easy to get drunk in Prague. Plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Prague. Yeah, it was yeah, two pints. <laughs> <laughs> Good city. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the final point, I think we're going to, the final fact we're going to do in the second part of On This Week in History. Um, so a place that um, uh, is just beyond, you know, just unlike any other 1918 Cecil Chubb gave Stonehenge to the British nation mm. gave it to the British nation can we give it so back was, so was it was it um on his private land was it then I well, guess he owned it how do you own Stonehenge that's crazy look well, if it's on your land then... yeah that's what I mean so hmm. yeah David Stonehenge the trust. yes have you time. been there as the sun's come up and I have, shone yes. through the little stonies yeah yeah and solstice right. summer solstice any theories about Stonehenge? What do you think it's all about? I actually watched an amazing documentary on the BBC, and um, a, a recent a recent one, and um, they proved that s some of the m big stones from Stonehenge actually come from a place in Wales. So um, that you know, you blue can, stones. Bl yeah, you can oh, you yeah. can you can put them like yeah, no, directly no. into the place. And, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. So most people think they floated them down the river, mm. 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 but huge to move at that time. How do you of float course. a rock in a river? Mm -hmm. How do you float a rock in a river? By boat. Well, obviously, put the <laughs> load of... Yeah, but they're quite big rocks, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. quite big. Tons. Yeah. You have to tons go and watch, and you go and watch um, a documentary on it, and uh, we'll come back and have a chat. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> of course, I, 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 I personally have... Uh, I, 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 I used to um, read books by a bloke called Eric von Daniken, mm. who was subsequently discredited, and his books were called Chariots of the Gods. Oh, yeah. And yeah. there was actually a film about it, and he... This, these books were all about the fact that that actually, aliens. you know, like the Egyptians and etc. were helped by yeah. aliens in mm. effect. Yeah, and I, I have to book. say, I, I I do I do think that either um, that's true mm. or to some extent, or uh, take someone like Atlantis. You, you know about mm. the the mm. legend of Atlantis. 
Um, so I think either that there there have been aliens who helped the Egyptians or whatever, yeah. or um, there was a very advanced civilization, civilization on period. Earth yeah. um, that that got destroyed somehow. Mm. There's a lot uh, of um, hieroglyphics and everything in the pyramids that depict uh, people coming from the sky and gifting tools to the people which then help them create the pyramids. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. having stuff like that in, in the pyramids really creates the big question, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Of, uh, There's more to wet Jimmy than come. meets a wrap. So there we are. <laughs> uh, next we have Jack Severetti and then we can bring you with the final points of this week. On this week in history with outstanding call. Welcome back to the Aspen Mate Radio Breakfast Show. It's Sunday, October the 31st. Sam Hain. All Hallows Eve. Go and get your pumpkins out and mm -hmm. start preparing. Uh, yeah. This is the final part of On This Week in History this week. Um, in 1922, um, Mussolini becomes the premier of Italy. So what was his nickname, Drew? Mussolini? Oh, so it? Hitler was obviously called the Fuhrer. Mm. And... Mm -hmm. Uh, Mussolini was called Il Duce. Il Duce. Il Duce. Il Duce. Which is, means the leader in Italian. <laughs> so obviously, um, uh, Mussolini was a fascist. Um, came to came to power very early on, actually. So a long time before Hitler. Mm. Eleven years, I think, um, predated. Mm. Um, and um, you know, a bit of a thankless task trying to turn the Italians into war heroes. I had, I, I, it's just I always find it staggering, you know, going back to history. You know, the Romans probably the most efficient soldiers in history, maybe you could argue. So man for man, you know, given the technology they had, and then um, you know, basically you've got. Uh, true to say, in the war, if if a thousand Italians fought, say, three hundred Greeks, the Greeks would win. Yeah, mm. you know yeah. that's how Spartans, that's how um, well. not mm. very good they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, the Italians have turned into lovers, makers of wine. Uh, and various other things that we won't mm. talk about on Sunday. Um, so, uh, 1929, Clarence Birdseye. What a great name, don't you think? Yeah. Mm. Clarence Birdseye sold his first frozen peas. Mm. And that's how we got Birdseye. with peas. Yeah. I thought he started with fish. I had some last yeah. night. Everything starts fingers, off with a pea. Mm. Yeah, Do you know that? <laughs> starts a off with a pea and ends with a kiss. Pod. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'll think about that one. I'll forget Miss Wiltshire to do her own re version on that for next week. Um, again, this is something I know a lot about, so uh, pick this one on purpose. 1938, a radio broadcast of the War of the Worlds, narrated by Orson Welles, caused mass panic in mm, America. Mm. So basically, people thought it was real. Yeah, that's hilarious. So uh, all these Americans right. tuning in to the War of the Worlds, obviously mm. by H.G. Wells. Yeah. Um, and they actually thought it was real. There are mm. people, hundreds and hundreds of people in their cars trying to flee because they actually thought there Mass was an, a Martian invasion. Um, i got to say, um, I think that uh, The War of the Worlds Great. by Jeff Wayne is um, mm. one of the finest pieces of music of all time. Mm. And I just want to say, because I have now remembered, so when I was talking about, um, do, do you want to know a secret earlier, it was caused by Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. So Paul isn't totally senile. Um, yeah, so War of the Worlds, just um, staggeringly brilliant uh, whole concept, really. Uh, 1938, uh, DuPont launched Nylon. Nylon. Oh, tight. Um, so, uh, Strings. being a bit of a Star Trek fan, there's a very good episode um, with Star Trek Enterprise, I think, which is a prequel to Star Trek, where Scott Bakula is the uh, captain. Um, and they go back to um, Depression, sort of 1930s America, you know, the land of prohibition and recession. Mm. And they go to like a Virginian place and they help these very poor people. And um, effectively, the uh, Vulcan, who's a science officer, um, who's uh, a model in real life, Jolene Blaylock, her name is, um, she actually raises money by taking Velcro to the patent office and she gets oh. like $1,000 for it. So I said, in Star Trek, that's how Velcro was that's invented. Uh -huh. I've just got to say that just... <laughs> 1948 flag of israel is adopted um so um i i i, I very much like those colors so i don't know if you can picture can you, man, can you no. remember what the flag of israel looks like blue Orange and white and anybody hmm? blue and white blue and white yeah. Mm, yeah same same color as greek blue actually it's very mm. similar if you see the greek flag and the israeli flag in fact it's quite interesting um it's actually quite a lot of um uh common history there uh, as you know, I've been to Catalonia, I think it's 12 times. Uh, massive earthquake in Catalonia mm. about 1953. And where do you think the first boat that came to help them came from? Israel. Uh. Yeah. So um, fair play to you, Israelis. Um, carrying on the Israeli theme, 1954, 
Britain and France joined Israeli forces in the Suez and began bombing Egypt to try to reopen the Suez Canal, mm. which is quite ironic, actually. I was thinking about this when I was compiling the list this week, because um, you might recall that Egypt was actually part of Britain. Mm. So at one point, I think in about 1900, the Egyptians had the king as their king. Yeah, right. Uh, and there we are in 1954 fighting against them with Israel and France. Mm. which is And actually, the Suez Crisis basically finished us off as the superpower. Right. Okay. If you want to know, so that's a ma ma matter of fact. So the, we, it's a bit we, too much. We're still clinging on to being mm. probably the third great nation in the world at that point. Mm. And then it just shot us to pieces, really. Mm. Um, rule Britannia, Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. waves. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't matter, because we are proportionately better than everyone else. <laughs> and God, of course, is English. As Al Murray says, the clue is in the name. Yeah. Great Britain, mate. Hey, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Um, very sad. I remember this. Uh, even as an 11-year-old, I was very sad when this happened. Ted Heath, you beastard. Uh, Britain joins the EU, or as the EEC as it was at the time, uh, basically on a lie. So the British people didn't have a vote on this. We were promised it was basically just a thing that would improve our trade. And, of course, we got sucked into a federal Europe. Although, to be fair, as an economist, uh, the latest statistics are suggesting that uh, the British economy will grow by 4% less as a result of Brexit mm -hmm. compared to uh, what would have happened if we stayed in Europe. Um, I'm a bit more optimistic than that, as you might expect. So I'm, I'm hoping that we will... You know, because we're one thing about the British, we're very cosmopolitan and very resourceful. So I think we'll make up that trade with the Anglo-Saxon countries in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. To be specific, in the Pacific. Mm, there we go. Yeah, Commonwealth. So let's go see. This is, sorry, to keep people on Drew here. Do you do you know where the Bosphorus is? The Bosphorus. The river. Nope. I'm surprised if Claire hasn't been here. That place. The Bosphorus. So the Bosphorus Bridge was completed, connecting Europe to Asia for the first time. Oh, okay. And it is in Istanbul. Istanbul. Istanbul, Constantinople, Istanbul. Hmm? I have been there. I know, I thought you would, but you didn't know where the Bosphorus was, did you? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's preposterous. So it's quite <laughs> interesting. Um, about a quarter of Istanbul is in Europe and three quarters of it is in Asia. Oh. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But of course, Istanbul itself is no longer the capital of Turkey. Ankara is. Ankara. Yeah. Free bit of education. Uh, checks in the post to Paul Waite. Um, unlimited amounts received with gratitude. <laughs> I'm quite happy to do small things in return, but don't expect uh, my body or anything like It's that. a very political it's country, isn't it, Turkey? Whenever I've been there, there's been a lot of, like, I guess, propaganda. I mean, I, I don't speak Turkish, so I don't, I don't really decipher what it says, but I see a lot of uh, posters and everything up wherever you go. They're interested in the Turks because they've also had a very rich history. Um, you know, we're obviously, as the Ottomans, they were at one stage a dominant force in, oh, yeah. maybe in the whole mm. world. Mm. Um, one of the greatest uh, people of all time, Suleiman the Magnificent, who again makes my top 20 uh, people of all time, one of the greatest mm. leaders in his world history. Uh, Turks um, are effectively people who, I'd say, crave to be loved by the rest of Europe. Right. Um, but obviously they now have, um, is it Ur Ur Urhan, Erdan, they're the leader? who's, um, you know, quite authoritarian and um, uh, obviously they are um, effectively Muslims, mm. but they very much look towards Europe. So yeah. they're, you know, they, 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 they're they quite a, an interesting country. We could spend days talking about that. Uh, 1974, I picked this film because it just fascinates me, the whole concept of what happens. Uh, 1974, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre horror Ooh. film premieres. So who's yeah. watched the Texas Chainsaw Not films? Me. I don't like gore. No, um, Callum was talking to him on, on the last mm. Pandora's back. Mm. I just <laughs> found that whole concept <laughs> of someone taking this chainsaw and going up to Ooh, someone and, and chainsawing off their arm. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's just It was sort of, based on a, yeah. on, a, on, a, on a true serial killer, wasn't it? Like, yeah. the Testament. Yeah. add something. Is it yeah. Mike Myers? Does Mike Myers play that? Or does he play some? Does he play? Um... No, he plays. Um... Oh no, Mike Myers. Mike is Myers the is the character is... from um, yeah. Friday from the Thirteenth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, 1980, Not the Polish powers. government recognizes Solidarność, which is solidarity in English. Uh, this is the union that was led by Lech Wałęsa. Uh, who, of course, went on to become the Prime Minister of Poland. So this is the time where the Poles really stood up and uh, fought against oppression and obviously managed eventually to get um, independence. Um, now we're talking, there's a lot of talk about pole, pole exit, so the, the, uh, their version of Brexit. 
Mm. Um, so, um, yeah, there's actually the Prime Minister of Poland this week stood up and basically threatened uh, the rest of the EU. They carried on um, attacking them what they were. He actually said they would use every weapon, uh, including military force, against against oh, wow. if the okay. if if the EU carried on. Wow. Um, Bold words. So the EU basically. Um, you know, I've got this thing about um, beating up naughty little boys as they mm. see them. So the Poles are taking... Of course, the Poles... Um, actually, I, I never quite understand this because they're quite a long way. Uh, Polish people um, identify very much with British people, mm. as do Hungarians, actually. It's, it's interesting. The, the countries that are closest to Britain in Europe tend to be uh, in Central and Eastern Europe, mm. which is um, quite fascinating, I think. 1984, Indira Gandhi was assassinated by her own bodyguards... Uh, two bodyguards went into her house and killed her. Um, mm. And the interesting thing with Gandhi, his her her son uh, went on to become the prime minister um, about ten years later. I think it was. Mm. All right. I think his name was Rajiv Gandhi, if so, I remember right. So who was this woman? She's prime minister of India. Prime Minister of India. But she wasn't related to Mahatma Gandhi, no. uh, just in case you were thinking yeah, that. Yeah. So that's, that's something not a lot of people know. Mm. Um, two facts to go. Um, 1992, Roman Roman Catholic Church reinstated Galileo Galilei. Mm. Do we know who Galileo Galilei is? Galileo Galilei. What was he? Do we know what he was? Very, very famous astronomer. Mm. Um, and he, 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 he was talking about, obviously, the, the universe. And, of course, at that time, it was heresy. Mm. So he was condemned as a heretic. Mm. Um, so, so in 1992, isn't that very nice of them? The Roman Catholic Church basically admitted that that was, was wrong, yeah. and uh, yeah. they readmitted him as a as a Catholic. Anyway, final fact today: 2011 world population reached seven billion. Whoa! Gosh. Where do you think it's going to end? When's it reach eight? Well, probably already has. Yeah, probably mm. already has. Now, I would have thought. So that was on this week in history. Um, I'm hoping maybe next week I'm uh, presenting at the Great British Expo in Reading. Um, and I have suggested to our sponsors on this, uh, sponsors of On This Week in History, um, where's the jingle gone, Drew? Um, Great British Expos. Ah. Um, that uh, I might do On This Week in History live um, on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. um, oh. Just a, a little announcement. So it's very unlikely that you're going to hear my dulcet tones uh, live on the Saturday and Sunday show next week. So um, I'm hoping that um, you'll get lots of me from the expo on Tuesday. And I'm hoping my great chums, Wet Jimmy and um, Sick Jimmy, well, bad food, <laughs> uh, will cover the show for me. So just advance posting that. So hope you enjoyed that. And next we have Patty LaBelle. On This Week in History. Sponsored by the Great British Expos. Home of the UK's largest regional business expos. Find out more at greatbritishexpos.co.uk.